All right, good everybody. My name is Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. 70 of you guys asked me this question about how to transition from becoming a salesperson to becoming a sales leader to becoming a sales manager to becoming a business owner and to becoming a CEO. But before I do that, I want to give you guys a quick shout out. If you're not sharing this already, the Entrepreneur Book Club, I appreciate you guys yesterday. But yesterday's live stream video, I promise you guys that if you shared this the most times, that I'd give you the Entrepreneur Book Club principles by Ray Dalio as my gift to you. And uh, this, is my, this, this is my gift to you guys. If you guys share this video by Ray, uh, share this video, I will give you this book by Ray Dalio called Principles if you share this video. Yesterday's winner, all the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota, is John Lange. He won the book yesterday. I think he shared it like to 20 of his friends. And uh, whether you share it with your friends' timelines or you share it in groups that you're a part of, just helping us get the message out and, and, and letting people know, man, that veteran entrepreneurs, uh, the multicultural community is alive and well uh, in the business world. And I want to give you this book, Principles by Ray Dalio, because I believe if you're going to build a business, it better be built on principles. And we're going to be referencing this book a lot. Uh, during this conversation, Yvonne Everett's online. What's going on, Yvonne? Uh, how you doing? Please share this video. Um, but let's let's get right into it. So today's topic: seven, seven of you, seven of you asked me how to transition from just thinking like a salesperson into evolving as an entrepreneur. So uh, welcoming to the show here, we've got my good friends Anel. Listen, Anel, you got like sixteen last names. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> It's the uh, it's the uh, Hispanic Latin Spanish thing. So we're yeah, using, we're using Cuevas today. What, what, what are we using? <laughs> Castro Lopez. Castro's fine. This is my boy. Uh, Castro. Castro, please. Let's let's right? Castro. <laughs> so we have Anel online as well as Javier, my battle buddy from the Marine Corps, United States yes. Marine, 15 Marine Expeditionary Unit, over the yes. USA. All right, so uh, Javier Castro, welcome, guys, to the Facebook Live interview. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate Thank it, man. You. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you for the right. opportunity, man. We really Absolutely. appreciate it. Listen, I, I heard you guys are in a national conference call on Monday, and I just thought, how come I'm not, how come I'm not sharing your story? So, you know, uh, I'm, and I'm glad you guys indulged me today. So uh, uh, Eric Aguilera is on. What's going on, buddy? Please share this video. Um, so let, let's talk about this real quick. So uh, Javier, if you don't mind, uh, brother, uh, let, let's uh, let's start with ladies first, shall we? Yeah, ladies, go ahead, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, 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 Anel, uh, uh, my connection with Anel is, is pretty is pretty awesome, is because uh, we actually had the same financial coach and financial mentor, which is Douglas Andrew, who wrote this book, uh, uh, Misfortune One Hundred One. Also wrote the book Last Chance Millionaire, and uh, th th this is a book I picked up. Um, Back in 04, 05, and actually, this is this is Doug, Doug actually signing the book in 2005, you know, 12, 12, 13 years ago. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, wow. But uh, it, it was a time in my career where, I, where I, was, I was a great salesperson. I was a great salesperson. I was connected to the dots between the mortgage industry, uh, asset management, uh, equity management, real estate uh, equity, and, and life insurance. And I knew there's a correlation somewhere. And reading this book connected those dots for me. Uh, I personally spent eight thousand dollars a day getting coached by uh, Douglas Andrew through his team training, and he helped sell me the next day of, of another three thousand uh, to go to team two training. And uh, and and come to find out, uh, and as I'm talking on stage, uh, Anel comes up to me and says, "You know, my husband, you are you are on the same uh, deployment as my husband." Because we're just we're just uh, racking our brains that you're part of 50 Marine Expeditionary Unit, but yep, we yep. connected. But Anel translated this book in Spanish, right? So she she is the one responsible for those of you who have read this book, Misfortune 101. Uh, what's the Spanish translation to that Anel? Misfortune. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was an amazing experience. One because I got the opportunity to meet Doug Andrew personally. And I had, I don't even remember how I ended up <laughs> speaking with him. Uh, last, the, the last minute I, I find myself flying to Salt Lake City where he's living. 
So I had this meeting with him and his CEO and, and other people from his organization, his two, his two sons at the time. And we were talking about the possibility to, to translate his book. It was already a New York bestseller book in English, Misfortune 101. But they, they definitely recognized the opportunity with the Hispanic market. So they were trying to, to reach out to the market with the, with the simplest transla translation that could have been done. So I was speaking with him. I had a couple of meetings. I had the privilege to, to have dinner with him and his family and get to know him better. So I also ended up taking his certification and I was just blown away by the concepts that he manages because it's completely different to what the traditional financial industry is focuses on. He is, his mentality is totally out of the box, but he's backed up by guarantees and using the life insurance platform for the clients. So people need to start thinking differently. So when I started reading the book, I just got in love with it and I was fascinated by it and I would appreciate more and more the opportunity to to translate it and, and be able to, to collaborate in such an important project. I I had many copies of the book. I, I apply those concepts up to this day to my clients with the financial planning and it's been a wonderful experience. And I believe the book was out in 2005. Yep. And I, I know also that he, he got collaboration from other Spanish speakers from Colombia and other, and other countries. So they, he wanted to have like a homogeneous mm -hmm. type of Spanish for everybody to understand. But I was, I was very lucky. I was very lucky. I was working on the project for about a month. Revision after revision, I was sending uh, drafts to him and his team. And when I went back to Salt Lake City, one of his sons came up to me and said, like, hey, we're having remarkable comments about, about your translation and your work. So I was very proud. So when I, when I saw you on stage last year with Hina, and you guys were talking about the principles of Uganda, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, well, this is a, a match in heaven. I, I really, I was very surprised because I, after that, I went into banking, international banking, and, and the approach for finances and financial planning is completely different. So I was let's, very surprised when. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about that. So the traditional approach in the Latino community as it regards to managing money, what would you say the awareness of money management in America and, and, and the level of education to make smart money decisions, money smart decisions, let's say that, right? Um, what do you think right now on a scale of one to 10, is it in a Latino community? 10 being the greatest, one being no. the, one being, no. one being, one being, one being four. 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 a four. A four, if we're, if we're lucky. Because yeah. there are like many myths about money when it comes to the Hispanic community. They, they feed each other from what they believe is true. And, and many people still have the money underneath their mattresses. And, and they're afraid. They're afraid sometimes for the language barrier because they don't know what to ask and they don't know how to articulate those questions. So they prefer not to ask anything. And, and that's a problem because they keep just going deeper and deeper in a hole and they never get ahead financially. And, and if you don't mind, I, I would like to share a story about uh, that screened the situation for the, for the whole Hispanic community. So I had a, an appointment with a client about two months ago. And coincidentally, the house of the client who had the appointment in her, in her house, it was like three or four houses away from the lady that used to take care of my son when he was a baby. So I, I was so excited to see the house. So after my meeting, I, I, I went to the house and I knocked and the lady opened the door. She, she has a, a, an in-house daycare. And I was so excited, I was like, hey, how are you? We hug. And then I walked into the house and she asked me, are you still in the bank? And I said, no, 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 I, I started my own practice. I'm, I'm working with PHP agency and it's a platform that allows me to represent over 35 companies. So I was trying to explain to her what I was doing. And all of a sudden the husband came running out of the room, like, like, like literally running. And, and he said, Anil, Anil, I think you can help us. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, please help us. We're 50, I'm 53, my wife is 52, we don't want to work forever, but we don't have a plan, we don't have savings, we don't have money. What do we do? We don't know what to do and we don't know who to ask. Mm -hmm. And I was, wow, 
he literally he was running and he was asking for help and and that that alone tells me how the hispanic community feels about money about their future they know they need it they know there's a problem but they don't know how to answer it they don't, they don't know where to go to and and again because one the language barrier and two because of the discrimination that exists for for small clients financial institutions and, and, and the insurance not the insurance the financial industry they're targeting the very high-end clients they're right. just the red carpet for them they just get them through a different door they receive phone calls they receive letters they have options whereas the majority of the country have no attention whatsoever and and they don't know they don't know they need help but they don't know what kind of help they need so that's why what we do is very important and and responding to, to your question is the hispanic community needs two three times more attention because they're so far behind to the rest of the population in the united states so there's a big opportunity for us to to help them and reach out to them I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying that. Now, um, Javier, I, I want to ask you the same question. Uh, being Latino, being multicultural, and being yeah. a military veteran, okay? How, okay. How, would you, how would you see our, our brothers, our brothers in uniform, Latino brothers in uniform, African American in uniform, multicultural? Because you know, it's, it's not like the the military, the Marine Corps is recruiting from the nicest neighborhoods, right? Yeah. They're recruiting yeah. class. Multicultural, inner city, um, overlooked communities. What would you say to that? Where at, where are we from an educate financial education standpoint? Ten being the greatest, one being the lowest. Uh, it it would be about the same. Or if I'm going to be honest with you, at least my experience here in, in, in San Diego, it's like two levels of trust that you have to go through. Number one is you know how veterans are. You have to be a veteran to to uh, to to listen to a veteran, right? Uh, most veterans only trust veterans. And at the same time, if you're a Latino veteran, you got to get past that level of, okay, you're a veteran, now we'll listen to you. But now, even if you're a veteran, are you Latino or not? So when he, when he comes here to approaching veterans about the business, about entrepreneurship, about learning, about life insurance, how to manage your money, so there's different levels of trust that you have to get. And quite frankly, we're a very, very stubborn community, man. At least here in San Diego, you know what's it like uh, in other bases? We're very stubborn uh, because of conditioning, classical conditioning. For, for years, you wear the same thing. You get the same haircut. You, the people tell you what to do. So people are taking care of you. So when you get out, the mentality is that the VA is going to take care of me. The government is going to take care of me, right? Or I, let me see how many benefits that I can get uh, as opposed to looking at you. You don't have to rely on the government. You don't have to rely on the VA. I remember the message that you delivered. Uh, in PSPU in Orlando, when you got all the veterans together, you say, guys, girls, take care of yourselves, right? But at the same time, look for entrepreneurship. Don't wait for somebody else to take care of you because it's not going to happen. So here what I find, and I was just talking to Anel three days ago, I wish I could get into the veteran community. It, it's just hard. It's just hard. So number one, you have to be a veteran. And then once you're a veteran, to talk about finances, are you Latino? Do you speak my language? Yeah. So that's what I have encountered here so far. Gotcha. So uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys are saying that because so let's let's talk about being a salesperson to become a sales manager to becoming a business owner. You know, back to you, NL. You know, it wasn't just enough for you to be a producer for 12 years. So why did you pick a platform like PHP Agency? How come you just didn't start your own practice? You know, uh, by the way, I used to be contracted with a with an FMO down there in San Diego called Life Pro, and I was one of the top producers when I was a producing agent. I was one of the top producers there, uh, right there out of La Jolla. Uh, um, and, I, and I was an agent uh, for, for many, many years, too, as well. So why, why did you, I know I got my reasons, but why did you pick a platform of PHP agency to not just be a salesperson, but actually to build an agency? Why do that? Thank you, Matt. In fact, me coming from the industry has made me realize and appreciate what PHP has to offer. Why? Because out there in the financial industry, I would say 90% of the, of, the, of the financial professionals are captive meaning that they only represent one company. And it doesn't have to be a bad company. It can be a great company. However, it's just one. PHP allows me to represent over 35 companies. So, and, and not only that, those are the best companies in the industry. So I feel empowered 
the empowerment and the and the trust and the confidence to tell my clients, yeah, I represent John Hancock, go go and look for it. Or I, I represent Foresters, I represent AIG, I represent National Life Group. Why? Because when my clients go out and, and, and they made their own research, they're gonna find several things. They're gonna find companies that have been in business for over a hundred years. So that's one of the main concerns clients have because it's okay, it's my money. I need to know about the company that is gonna hold my money and, and, and they're in the in all the right to, to do it. So I feel confident to say, hey, go ahead and, and research it because they're gonna find again companies that have been in, in business for over a hundred years, meaning that they have been in their obligations for over a hundred years. And for me, one of the main bumps in the economy is the Great Depression. So most of the companies that we represent went through the Great Depression of 1929. And if they can overcome that bump and still meet their obligations with their clients, it's just amazing. The other thing they're gonna find with the companies that we represent is that most of them are in the Fortune 500 list. Most of them are in the Barron's uh, list. Most of them have records like American National, who, who was ranked among the top 50 uh, companies to be reliable. So I'm, I'm just so excited to be able to, to represent all those many options because it truly gives me as a professional the ability to find the true solution for the client rather than having to put them inside a box that may not fit for them, but I don't want to let the client go, so I'm going to put this shirt that doesn't even fit. So that's the confidence that I have with PHP. One. Two, the ability, like you said, to transition from being a producer into being a business owner because now we're building our own agency, mm -hmm. meaning that we need an additional component that is going to explode the, the benefits of, that we have as, as business owners and that our clients and agents are going to have because it's not only about selling, it's about developing other leaders into becoming financial professionals as well and the ability to multiply yourself and, and reach out as many people as we want because all, we know that all those people need our help and nobody is servicing them. So, Coming to PHP is kind of like a dream come true because I couldn't find anything that is that is wrong. <laughs> I have we have the, the ownership of our agency, we have all the carriers that we represent, we have the best compensation plan with the equalizer bonus, it is amazing. So some people are so fixated with with the compensation. Oh, I have ninety percent. Okay, ninety percent of that. hundred percent yep. of that. So it's, it's all a matter of perspective and being able to really make a true calculation to see that our compensation plan is the best in the industry. Yeah. So that is, that is one of the things that made me transition into, into the company. And the other thing is that I would say in the financial world right now, there are two, two worlds, two groups. The financial advisors, which is the role I, I'm coming from, I, I, I'm, I've had all my securities licenses, Series 7, 6, 63, all the electronic of 60, <laughs> a series, my life insurance. So I have all my licenses to be a financial advisor, a stockbroker, everything in that world, which is where, where I'm coming from. So those financial advisors want to fix everything with stocks and bonds. Just a different combination, just a different balance, but everything comes down to stocks and bonds. Then we have another group, which is insurance agents. Insurance agents that only sell life insurance policy, but they, they only scratch the surface. They don't really take advantage of what an insurance company and the platform of insurance can provide to our clients. And these two groups don't communicate. And I see ourselves in in PHP like a hybrid of those two worlds because we can offer returns like the, like the stock market, but we can offer guarantees that the stock market doesn't offer. And how do we do that through insurance companies, but not just selling life insurance, it's just using the life insurance platform as a tool for the financial solutions of our clients. So that's that's what it has me so excited and passionate about. <laughs> Matt. I can hear you, Matt. <laughs> what happened? Did we lose him? Oh, can you, can you hear me now? Is that, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Loud and clear, brother. Good. So uh, I just want to share this uh, this photo. Let's see. I can, uh, let's see. I can do that better. Where are you at, bro? Where are you at in there? <laughs> there you uh, 
So there's Anel top left, top left in that photo. So uh, Anel, can you explain to us this trip, this ladies' trip that PHP uh, PHP agency put on just for the top performing ladies in, in Absolutely. Boston? Absolutely. It was such an honor, and I was so humbled by it. PHP has um, uh, an, an organization within our organization which is called PHP Ladies, in which we empower and recognize ladies in business. This trip, this is the second trip that the, the company has put together, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I have I just joined PHP about a year ago. When I joined, the PHP Ladies trip was taking place, and, and I see this group of ladies having so much fun in New York, having the time of their lives. And I saw them, I was excited for them. I was excited to see the company has this type of incentives for ladies. And I told myself in my mind, I was like, I'm going to the next trip. That, that's, that's a given, I'm going to the next trip. And it is so surreal that it actually happened. I, I, I won, I qualified. The, there are two different categories to qualify. They, they choose the five top producers in the in the entire organization which i'm the, the the category in which i qualify and there is the five top brokers and seeing on the five top brokers the the caliber of the ladies that were going your wife sheena ceci mary phil all those amazing leaders and for me was i don't know the word that i'm looking for it was such an honor and privilege to to have the opportunity to spend time with them learn from them and see how how they're conducting themselves and their business to have two million dollar business like is your case, Ceci Vargas million dollar business, and, and learn learn from them. So we went to Boston. There were four entire days in which I I couldn't even explain the level of pampering that we received. <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh my god, this is this is overwhelming because. Jennifer and Maral, they, they truly put together a trip in which you can see it was planned with the heart. It was planned every single detail, every single minute of the day was planned out for us to, to have a wonderful time. They chose the best hotel in Boston. They give us the best rooms. We would come back at night from, from going out and the, the bed was full with gifts wow. and, and the bed said and the slippers there's almost like somebody there waiting for us to put the slippers like, yeah. <laughs> so but besides the pampering and the amazing time that we had we went to the theater we went to all these fine dining restaurants besides that was the opportunity to to be with these ladies to learn from them to to see what's next for them to see how they organize their days and their activities and and their teams and how they they put everything together to make it happen because what what they have accomplished is it can be a dream it is a dream for me and for for all the other ladies and guys as well in the organization so having the opportunity to get that information firsthand from them while we're chatting and laughing and having a great time is priceless i i'm so honored i I really want to qualify for the next one, and I would encourage everybody in the organization to to qualify for those trips. See, this, this, is, this is the type of fun stuff that when you're partnering with the company, hi mom, when you're partnering with the company, this is part of the fun stuff that you can experience as an individual salesperson. Yes. Yeah. When yes. you're on a platform and you're connected to something greater than yourself, and you have a mission that's greater than yourself, and a company has a mission greater than themselves, you know, this is the type of stuff that a forward-thinking visionary CEO does. And yes. so, uh, Javier, yeah. uh, let me ask you this question. Um, going through uh, the Marine Corps, being a combat veteran, PTS, PTSD, yes. for the veterans out there is watching this right now, how do I get out from my current situation, transition from my former life, and fast forward into – whatever you know uh, i want to get involved in is you know this, this be more specific as an entrepreneur how do i get how do i get how do i blast past it because you study psychology didn't you uh, don't you have a degree yeah. yeah yes yes um matt for me it was that transition uh uh when the, when i first uh retired from the military uh i went through a transition uh i, I was lost i was really lost i didn't know what to do uh, I became a mental health therapist, but I don't think that's what my true passion was. 
Uh, even an elf, I remember her telling me, babe, you look lost. And of course, I have PTSD and all the little nuggets that come with it, you know, passive aggressiveness, depression, anxiety, compulsive behavior. Uh, and then the devil gets in your head and then things start to happen. You know, uh, you know, my behavior was not what it used to be when I was active duty. So somewhere along the lines, I lost track of what I wanted to do, who I was and who I wanted to be. Uh, and it was difficult. It was very difficult. Uh, one day I woke up in the morning and I looked at myself in the mirror and, and I didn't like what I saw. I was a bit overweight, uh, bags under my eyes. Uh, I was moving backwards, not moving at all. It's just at one point when you're a combat veteran, you experience depression, you tend to blame everybody. You blame the VA, you blame combat, you lose friends in combat, and then you blame yourself. You came back alive and your friends didn't, or you came back in one piece and your friends didn't. Uh, and just the devil got in my head. At one point, I realized that I needed to make a change. But what I did is, man, what happened to you, Javier? You used to be a badass in the military. What have you become now? You know, where is that person that, you know, was kicking butt and taking names when you were active duty, right, for your country? And all of a sudden, you know, that person wasn't there. So I needed to make a change. I realized that the change needed to happen, right? With the help of Anel, of course, she was encouraging me and pushing me. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, the transition went into, you know, becoming a mental health therapist to, to help our brothers and our sisters in distress right now. Uh, and then, you know, getting involved in nutrition and then yoga and then, uh, you know, mindfulness and things like that. Uh, and then the transition was gradual because I realized I wanted something more. Uh, I think you were mentioning about greatness and, you know, visionary forward thinking. Uh, I, I want to reach out into my true potential. I want to know what it feels like to reach out and touch the sky. Um, it was a long process because I still nowhere near there. But that's when PHP uh, came into place. And if I tell you this quick story, initially, Anel was going to come on board PHP. It wasn't me. You know, I was looking for something, but not necessarily PHP. Okay. Uh, and we still had an interview with Anel. He was looking at Anel. He wasn't looking at me because it was obvious that I was just there to, you know, support her. But Chris Bell kept talking about greatness and, and you know, making an impact with the community and, and you know, talking about making money and, and building a team, and building an agency. And, all those words spoke to me, and I said, dude, this is what I want to do. Mm. So and I reached out to Chris right and then I told him, I want to do this. I'm in. I'm in, right? Uh, and PHP came at the right time because once I realized I wanted to make a transition into something else, I was just looking for that place. I was just looking for that spot, for that opportunity, and as soon as the opportunity arrives, boom, I'm there. So one of my, my vision right now is to build an agency big enough for me to have enough income so I can open up a health and wellness center to help out our brothers and sisters in distress so they don't have to go to the red tape, through the VA. There's some VAs are making a, doing a wonderful job, but a lot of them are not. We've seen it on the news. Um, hey, man, 21, 22 people are committing suicide every day, once too many, by the way, once too many, right? So I tell them, no, I don't sleep. Every day I count the menace and I think about somebody is gone right now because there was not somebody reaching out to help them out. So that's my drive. That's my vision. That was my transition going from – combat PTSD into what we're trying to do now, Matt. Man, that's awesome. So, so th you know, thinking uh, together, working together as a couple, because you, you both could have had your own business together, just you, you and each other. But what's the bigger vision in terms of, you know, because a lot of people will do that. Because, you know, in our industry, you have, pra you have people that have practices. Husband and wife can run their own practice, or the wife or the husband can run a practice. The wife does something else, or the husband does something else. Why are you guys building this business together? What's that transition like from working independently and individually to now working together? It was a, a process. Sometimes we want to kill each other. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't say. <laughs> You're not doing it right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's been a learning curve because we have always seen eye to eye when it comes to family, when it comes to our kids, to, to the way we conduct our lives. But it's the first time we're together in business. So we're learning how to do it. But what I think we do share is it's a big vision and it transcends the money. We, we really have, like he was talking about, his wellness at center with psychologists and, and yoga teachers and nutritionists that where veterans can just walk in and, and be helped without having to prove or wait or anything. On my case, one of the, the dear causes to me is abortion. I, I want to do everything that I can to give women alternatives so they don't have to kill their babies. 
and, and they feel they've been listened to and they've been taken care of. So that's one of the causes. The other thing is that we share a passion for, for developing people. And you, a, a young agent just passed her test. Is, is that right here? She just walked into the office. Chris, been, congratulations! Yes, <laughs> and she, she's the 14th person in in the last two weeks. So I would say like almost a, one a day. We average is one a day. One person a day is getting a license in, wow. in our organization. So that is a big responsibility for us, and we really want to deliver to those agents that have put their trust in our hands. That's that's a big deal, and we take it very seriously. So what we want, we want to expand. We want to develop amazing independent leaders that are capable of reaching out to families and, and, and find the best financial solution for them. That's what we want. We want to expand to other territories. We, we currently have an agent in North Carolina and another one in Florida. So we want to open markets there. We cannot wait for a PhD to open in Mexico because that's a huge right. community that, yeah. really, yeah. that's that are going to what we do, especially yeah. in Mexico. In Mexico, there is a lack of education, even, even more intense than what we have here in the United States when it comes to money. People have have no idea how to manage their money except a few. So we want to go there, and and we have plenty of friends and family yeah. there that we can also help into into making them financial professionals. So I think the more we advance in the company, the more we see how immense the opportunity is and how much work we have ahead of us. But rather than intimidating us, is just encouraging us to to keep moving forward and keep. Acting and, and, and one thing I didn't have when I when I come, came into the firm was urgency. I was just taking everything so casual. Oh, I know how to do this. I've been in this industry for for many years. I got it. No, I didn't. I didn't. And and Chris Phelps was one of the of the responsible for me to change my mentality into having urgency, into having urgency and making things happen. And and he's right. And Javier as well. Javier, we, we were having this conversation, and he said, Dave. We really need to make this happen because as we're speaking right now, another soldier is committing suicide because nobody helped him. A good friend of his passed away last week, just last week, because he committed suicide. And he's been four of his close friends. Wow. So we cannot have the luxury of waiting. As we're speaking right now, another baby is being killed. Mm -hmm. So we don't have time. We need to add. We need to instill that urgency in our agents and really go out and change the world. That's what we do. We change the world. We are the difference between a family getting ahead financially or not. We are the true difference between a family's kid going to college or not, being being happy in retirement or not, or sinking to tragedy if, if something happens with the family with a debt of disability, or just having the luxury to grieve mm -hmm. in, in, in peace, knowing that the financial situation has been resolved. That's what we do, and we, we're taking this very seriously, and we're in this mission and this crusade, and we're going to change it. We're going to change the world we're gonna, one family at a time. Yeah. But important also, family business. Family business, the vision uh, of, you know, having the kids running around here in the office sometimes on non-BOM nights. Uh, you know, my, my nine-year-old boy can tell you the, you know, the four homes of money, the three legs of retirement, and he knows who, <laughs> he knows who Patrick is, he knows who Matt Zapala is, same with my four-year-old daughter. So, because we're always watching, we're always watching your channels as well. So, for me, it, it's just pride to have them running around. And just this morning, and I was asking, who's your best friend? And my daughter says, Patrick is my best friend, right? <laughs> and every time I turn on the TV, and Dora's like, hey, that's Matt, man. That's Matt. That's my boy. You know, it's like, <laughs> so uh, just having family here at the same time, because when I was working as a mental health therapist, I didn't have that option. I have to ask permission for everything. It's like regressing. When you get a nine to five, that you're regressing as a child because you have to ask permission for everything. Hey, boss, can I get to work late because I have to see my kids sing at school? Hey, boss, can I leave work early because my kids got to play hockey? Hey, boss, can I go on vacation? By the way, I can't even afford to go on vacation because what you pay me is like nothing, right? So it becomes a staycation, as they say, right? So having my kids here and learning everything about entrepreneurship through PHP uh, and people like you, people like Rodolfo Vargas and Ceci and Sheena and, and Patrick and the films. Has been an amazing experience so far, man. It has. So, it has. Very, very enriching. One of the things that I, one of the things I had uh, a challenge with when I was an independent agent 
was finding a system and how to recruit. Because I, I remember, I, I remember a, a, an annual review, and the, the Louis Louis Arroyo. He kept looking at my chair. I'm like, bro, why are you looking at my chair? Boricua, Puerto Rican guy, right? He kept looking. At my chair, right? I said, bro, why do you keep looking at my chair for? It's the same as yours. He says, you know, um, I I uh, I admire your chair because there's a difference between men, when you and I both stand up. So what's that? The difference between your chair and my chair is I get to go back to my dead end job. That my boss, just like what Javier said, that my boss allowed me to come to for an extended period of time so I can manage my finances with you, yeah. right? I, so I get to go back to that. I know what I'm going to make this year. I'm not, I'm not, I know what I'm going to make next year for, and for the last 14 years. But your chair, you get, to, you get to do what you want. You can go with your wife. You can go to the movies. You can have lunch with her. You can, you can have, take the rest of the day off because, Matt, I like your chair. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm like so I said, Lou, are, 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 you ask, are, you asking, are you asking me to recruit you? And train, <laughs> right? And and he says, "Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do what you do." And this was 07, 08. and I was still an independent salesperson. And I'm like, "Bro, I, don't, I, I said I don't know how to train you, bro. I mean, I mean, I guess you can get. A, I don't even know how to get a license in Illinois because I got <laughs> right because when I got licensed when I first started my career, I was in California, and, and right outside of Camp Pendleton, so in, in Anaheim. So I, I I didn't even know the licensing process in Illinois." So, you know, that was my dilemma is that is like there, if, if you're an insurance agent out there, you're a financial advisor, and you would love to build an agency, you love to build a firm, you like to build something a little, a little bit more than just yourself, you like to build a firm of five guys or 10 guys or 50 guys, you know, right? Or, or, or the vision like Anel and Javier, like 500 guys, you know, mm. you know, coast to coast international, a thousand, a thousand, two thousand, you know, PHP, we have, we have a, a vision of 500,000 agents. So, so it doesn't matter if you have five or five hundred thousand, but if you just want to connect yourself with something more than just yourself, that's mm -hmm. what draws people to PHB agency. That's what it draws quality couples, individuals like Javier and Anel. Um, so, guys, as as we wrap stuff up, uh, tell us a little bit about more specifically about your office. Why San Diego? Why not Texas? Why why not move to Chicago? Uh, uh, why did you guys decide to build an office in San Diego and sp and spreading your wings? Through using using our system to to grow your business. Um, if I can just wait for a second. Uh, well, I retired from here, uh, and I decided to stay in San Diego. That's where we got married. Loved the city. As we grew as a couple, as a married couple, and had kids, we considered before moving somewhere else, right? Where we had the mentality of nine to five mentality, where it's too expensive to live here. We gotta move somewhere like Oklahoma or somewhere, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, Go out there, man. It's, like, it's a lot of cows and whatnot. I was stationed there, so. Uh, but then Anel, quite frankly, Anel has always been spearheading the idea of becoming an entrepreneur. He said, "Babe, the solution is not to move somewhere else where it's cheaper. The solution is to make more money. We have to fight." Right. Uh, that was her, right? right? So I give it to her. I give it credit for that. And so, <laughs> And, and so um, it took me a while to buy into that philosophy, to be honest with you. Uh, she's the one that made me just get going. And San Diego for us has been like everything. Our kids are born here. They're being raised here. And Mexico is right down there, right? So we have the ability to visit friends and family. Uh, and like Anel said, bro, we just have to make it happen here. We have to build. We have to create wealth. We have to make more money, right? That's it. That's the solution. Don't move to more Oklahoma, Tallahassee, Arkansas, right? <laughs> so uh, so we stuck around in San Diego because we were recruiting in San Diego. We love the fields. We got their mentorship and the leadership. Uh, and we started uh, at another office where you've been. We used to share with your team over there. So we both have grown. Uh, and we're developing an office here, uh, a new one, just opened January 1st. And we have one on the third floor that's uh, 12,000 square foot, and we're trying to get that going at the end of this year, possibly before that. So our vision is just we planted a flag here. We burned the ships, planted our flags, staying in San Diego. We're building in Imperial Valley, uh, and uh, we're just trying to make it happen here, man. Yeah. I, I, I really love that answer, Anel, that, 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 that you just shared. Because to get ahead in your finances in this day and age, it's not about subtracting. It's not about yeah. taking away. It's about multiplication, yeah. and so yeah, yeah. Go ahead and now you wanted to you want to share your two cents too as well. 
yeah, yeah. When it comes to San Diego, there is this this bad reputation, if you will, that oh, people in San Diego is too laid back because of the weather, because of the beach, so they will never be business business focused, right? That's not true. We we refuse to buy into that theory, and we said no. People in San Diego are as needed as anybody in anywhere else about growing, about leadership, about getting ahead financially. So we just flat out refuse to, to buy into that. And the other thing is that there is a huge population of Hispanic yeah. people here in San Diego. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm currently working very closely with the with the in Hispanic Chamber of E-Commerce with my dear friend Taide Aburto, who has given me a platform to reach out to to Hispanic families. And the response has been overwhelming to the point that it has reaffirmed that, that we made the right decision, that, we, that we're that we here because we have a mission and we have people to reach out to and, and educate them and give them information and give them options and, and take that burden off their, their shoulders knowing that there is a way out from their financial problems that they have right now yeah. and have a, a bright future ahead of us. So we couldn't be happier. We really, really blessed to be here to have the opportunity to, to meet people like you like Sheena like everybody everybody that that's another thing that I've never experienced when when you have a job you you have acquaintance and you get along well with them but there is no like a deep connection with them maybe one or two if anything but here everybody becomes your friend my my, my agents are my extended family I care right. for them we, we truly plan together, we have fun together, we, we love, we work. It's, it's just a surreal experience that I that I would highly recommend to people because most people hate their jobs, they hate the salaries, and they hate their co-workers. <laughs> I would encourage, <laughs> that's the truth, that I would encourage people that are looking for something else to take a look at what we have to offer because this is completely different to what they have experienced in their lives. And, and they will be gladly surprised about the possibilities that they have through this platform. And to know that they're not by themselves. We, they have somebody that will watch after them, that will hold them by the hand and just take them through the journey and make them successful. That's awesome. And by the way, if you guys are just tuning in right now, what you're looking at is a picture of Enel and the PHP ladies uh, from a couple weeks ago in Boston on an all expensive paid trip, the top ladies was taken out by our company to Boston to enjoy a time out there in the East Coast, uh, the whining and dining and just socializing and, and relationship building. And, uh, and, and and by the way, guys, if you guys are just tuning in right now, I said, you know, I've always seen the typical financial person as a 60 year old uh, Caucasian male, because that's what I see on Fox Business and this and this and that. By the way, which is true because that's the average age of an insurance agent in America today, according to Limra. And so we are attracting a new wave, a new generation of agents and agency builder into the insurance industry through P through PHP. And that's why we're having a conversation with Javier and Anel, uh, who, who uh, smart, educated uh, people. Anel was in, in the in the industry for twelve years. And she's blowing it up over here at a PHP agency. Um, what, what's what's one last thought, guys? What's one last thought for you guys? You know, you, you're going out there. You're talking to a couple out there. You know, I'm not so sure. You know, I, I know uh, Filipinos. It's it's very hard for Filipinos. I'm, me being Filipino, it's hard for a lot of Filipinos to think outside of just having a regular job, right? Uh, to to make a living, to be financially secure. Uh, what would you say to somebody out there that's an employee, a salesperson? So you know, I got a job here. I got salary and commission. What would you say to that person? Say, wait, why don't you take a stab at entrepreneurship? Be a CEO. Be a CEO of your own brand. What would you guys say to that final question? I would say don't be afraid. Of course, you're going to be outside your comfort zone. However, you need to balance. You need to, to, to evaluate in a very honest way. Like, okay, I have this job. How secure is this? Because that's the thing that people usually say, oh, but I have a secure income. And I would ask them, just like Chris Phillips asked, like, do you know people that have been laid off recently? Yes. Okay, so how secure was that income? When you become an entrepreneur, you have the security that nobody's going to fire you because you're your own boss. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's a true security right there. 
and and people are afraid to to let go because they don't know anything else and they think they're going to be by themselves and and they're not they're not we really have a system that works like a well oil machine yeah. we have the mentorship we have the success stories like yourself and and sheena and ceci all these stories that are so inspiring but also are a confirmation that it is possible that you don't have to be in, in a career or a job for 15 20 years to make it happen you guys made it happen in, in two years yeah i mean building a mil million dollar company is just simply amazing so those testimonials they they're gonna have here and not only that I've seen, which I'm very impressed by, that all the leaders like you have, you, you're accessible, you're willing to help. You, anybody can ask you a question and you're more than happy to share the key for your success and you don't see that anywhere else. Anywhere else, if you're succeeding, you don't want anybody to know what you're doing because they may come and take your spot. Here is a completely selfless system and, and people can just jump in and, and be part of this culture and this and this way to do things and helping families and helping your own family and, and growing your business. I, I don't think it gets any any better than that. Amazing. Uh, Matt, something yeah. that I do when we talk to couples, I realize, and of course I have a background in psychology, so I have a little advantage, but that all couples have dreams and hopes. And, and all the couples want something. I, I don't want a house. I want a home. I want a five-bedroom home in La Jolla here in San Diego. I want to be able to afford things. I want to travel to Paris. I want to travel to Rome or Italy or, I don't know, Cancun. All couples have dreams. So even if they're stable couples financially where both of them are making decent income, and Ellen and I were making decent income, right? So the, re the, the only reason why we came to PSP is because we're looking for something. That we looked at ourselves and said, what we do is it going to take us where we want to be five, ten years from now. So when we're talking to couples, we just got on board, uh, you know, a couple lady. Uh, um, it, it took him a while, but they realized, you know what, you guys are right. You know, we we can continue this way. We'll be comfortable, but I'm not going to achieve or we're not going to achieve what we want to in this job. You know, I want a home. I want to be able to travel to Paris or Rome or I want to be able to do whatever I want with my husband and my kids. I want to be able to bring my kids to my office while I do work and I can watch and play and grow. So with couples, uh, that's how we approach it because that's how we were approached and it worked for us. And deep inside, most couples want it. It's, it may take some time. Some couples may get it right away, but some of them take time. But every couple here, if you're really looking for something, most of them are. So that's that's how we, we do it as well. Man, that's awesome. Man, that's awesome. Matt, you, got, you guys have been listening to you. Yeah, you guys have been listening to you. And then they'll come here. We got some feedback or something. There you go. I don't know what's going there. Uh, okay, there's no more feedback. Cool. But you guys have been listening to Javier and Anel Castro based out of San Diego. I think somebody was asking us for your address. So if you guys wouldn't mind jumping on this live stream and punching your address so people can visit you out there. Because you guys do workshops on uh, twice a week, right? What, what day? Uh, Tuesdays or Wednesdays? Tuesdays at 7 and Saturdays at 10. And right. the address is 7220 Trade Street, Suite 203, San Diego, California, 92121. All right. And, uh, and I think I'm going to be punching in the address on the comment section there. Yeah. I'd love to have some guys visit you out there in San Diego and say hello. Looks like there's a bunch of veterans out there. Uh, Willie Colon says, what's up? Um, uh, I think... Uh, um, uh, uh, who was it? Vincent Sendejas, another another uh, another veteran. Yeah. Too, well. Of he's course, coasty. he's a coasty man. He's a coasty. Yeah, he, they're fighting to be part of the military too, right? <laughs> 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 Appreciate you. I, I remember when we were there in San Diego a few months ago. We were having a cigar at the cigar lounge. It was you, Javier, Vincent. Who, who else was with us uh, grabbing cigars there in, in San Diego? Uh, there was, Nick was there. Uh, there was uh, there was a couple of guys from the Marines as well. So there were some guests from somebody yeah. else. I know uh, Chris Richardson was there as well. Yeah. Uh, so we had we had a couple of events. We had the greatest time, and we're gonna do that again. Yep, absolutely, man. I mean, I look forward to coming down to San Diego. Thankfully, it's starting to bust loose uh, the negative twenty degree weather here in Chicago. So <laughs> it's an opportunity to, to start traveling again. So listen, guys, I really appreciate you guys. If you haven't done so, if you're just tuning in right now or watching the replay, make sure you like our page here on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube. 
and make sure you share this video because the person that shares this video the most times to your friends, to other veterans, to other couples that you want to inspire to go into business, uh, we want to give you this book from our office, from my desk to your, your address, wherever you want me to send it to your, your house or your office. I want to give you this book by Ray Dalio. It's part of the hashtag Entrepreneur Book Club that we do once a month with our, led by our CEO, Patrick Bet David. And we want to make sure that you guys are constantly reading, you're constantly growing, you're constantly developing as an individual because that's how you elevate to start thinking bigger and start receiving more from a salesperson, from an employee, into a sales manager, into an entrepreneur, running your own business and becoming a CEO. Javier, Anel, you guys have been so gracious with your time. Thank you for joining me here on the Movement Podcast uh, on, on my Money Smart Guy Facebook live stream. I just appreciate you guys for the couple that you are and what you guys represent, inspiring a lot of people. There's a lot of people here in the comment section that have been inspired by your message. So I appreciate you guys for coming out on the show today. Thank you, Matt. For your leadership, your mentorship, you guys rock. We're hoping to fly out to Chicago and see you guys out there and learn from you guys as well, man. Thank you so much. It's been, it's been very humbling. I appreciate it. You got it. More to come. A lot of great things are coming you guys' way. And for those of you watching this, you apply yourself in transitioning from where you are today, growing mentally by reading books and surrounding yourself with a different group of people that want to know more, be more, and have more, you'll find a unique transformation in the way you think, manage, feel, and reach towards financial independence. With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Until we meet again, until you live smart, until you love smart, and be money smart today. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Have a wonderful day.